goodness, I played, I guess you might say forever. Probably about 1931 is when I first started. It'd be 85 years approximately that I've been playing hockey. I'm Mark Sertich. I'm the oldest ice hockey player in the world. I'm 95 years old, hope to be 96 on July 18th. I'm still playing hockey three times a week. I get up at six in the morning. I do my sit-ups, my push-ups, and uh, a few other things that kind of loosen me up, and then uh, I'm, I'm ready to go, yeah. I only live about a mile away, but I, I do drive down by myself. And it's funny, but I'm usually the last one there. I'm the one that lives the closest. <laughs> the group uh, consists mostly of some former uh, firefighters and also, of course, the uh, current ones. So there's, there's quite a different mixture there. I think about my age, and uh, once in a while I say to myself, uh, you know, you're only 59, you're not 95. I just turn the numbers around and make myself feel better. <laughs> My love for hockey is, is hard to explain. You're skating with the puck, you're shooting the puck, you're trying to take the puck away from the other guy. There's so many different things you're doing that it, it just keeps you going there. Everybody's got a roll. I'll, I'll keep dishing it to you, you just keep finishing it. All right, I just keep going. Keep doing a little bit better then. Right? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll... If the coach keeps putting us out there, we're doing something right. That's right. They're the greatest bunch of guys I've ever played with. They set me up all the time. And uh, sometimes it gets to a point where I'm almost embarrassed that I'm not scoring more because they're always giving me the puck. <laughs> A group of the players uh, right after hockey go come over to my home and uh, we sit down in the kitchen and uh, discuss who did what on the ice and so on and so forth. At my age, uh, it's a wonderful way of being connected with the younger people and I think that's very important for, for an older person. I'm so fortunate that it gives me a chance to be involved. It's, it's really the best thing that's ever happened to me. In the heart of downtown Nairobi, there is a rink. That rink is home to an unnamed ice hockey team. Currently, we haven't found a name for the team, but we just call it the Kenya Hockey Team. My name is Bernard Azegere, currently the captain Kenya Ice Hockey League. I decided to play ice hockey simply because I wanted to do something different. Here in Kenya, many people, we grew up playing different sports like soccer, athletics. I just wanted to do something that stands out, something unique. We have around 30 members in our team. We compete against ourselves. So whoever shows up, we divide the equal number of players, then we play against ourselves. There's no money in ice hockey in Kenya. Unlike in Europe, where we have leagues whereby teams can buy players, pay them well, here in Kenya we're just beginning. In the next coming years, ice hockey will be a big sport. Currently, many people are joining and we're hoping to get even more as time goes. Our future dream is for our Kenyan team to be featured in the Winter Olympics. I know we don't stand a chance, but just being there, we might prove the world wrong. Once you achieve your dreams, there's a satisfaction that comes with it. It's just a good feeling. You're like, okay, we've made it, finally. My mom thought I was crazy when I told her I was into underwater hockey. And she continues to think I'm crazy when I um, show up with black eyes. But uh, she's also my biggest fan when I'm at the World Championships. Mm -hmm. 
My name is Tiara Yulberg and I'm the captain of the U.S. Women's Underwater Hockey Team. So underwater hockey is played six on six. Um, we're not wearing tanks, um, just fins and mask and snorkel. The puck is weighted and sits on the bottom of the pool and players use a short one-handed stick to play the puck. Unlike ice hockey, there's no goalie in underwater hockey. And the snorkel helps you uh, watch the play while you're recovering on the surface, um, but otherwise you're holding your breath when you're actually involved in the play. We take underwater hockey very seriously. The U.S. women's national team compete at the World Championships. They're held every two years, and they bring in about 25 different countries um, to compete to be the best of the best. It really is the ultimate team sport because um, there's no puck hog that can just do everything for your team. Eventually that person's going to have to come up to breathe and you have to have a teammate there to take your place. If I'm about to score and I'm running out of air, I'm going to freaking score. We see people coming to underwater hockey both from swimming backgrounds and from ice hockey backgrounds. We struggle from the fact that most people in the United States don't grow up playing it. Uh, people don't grow up holding their breath and trying to kick hard underwater. Um, they grow up playing soccer and playing basketball. There's no, no money in underwater hockey, so um, we're absolutely doing it for the love of the sport. I love underwater hockey. It's so elegant. Being underwater is, is just a beautiful thing. I feel like some really gorgeous sea creature when I play. <laughs>
Yeah, like every kid in uh, Canada, we all dream to play pro someday. And now in Dubai, I'm able to do that. EHL stands for Emirates Hockey League and it was uh, created just to get the best hockey players in the UAE into a competitive league to build and develop their local players. We have six teams in the league this year. We've had players that have played pro, they've played high college level in the States, high college level, university level in Canada. We have players that played pro in Europe, all different levels. In Dubai, we don't have a local team of Emiratis, but we play against the locals in Abu Dhabi and in Al Ain. Playing in Dubai Mall exposes it to a lot more people. It really brings more people to the game. You know, when you're in Dubai Mall and you're playing and you're surrounded by a thousand people who 60% of them probably have never seen it before, it's, it's a special feeling. It's, it's an honor to be able to do that. Obviously, I, I think it's the best sport in the world. It's great to see that you're making some sort of contribution to expanding the sport and promoting it in parts of the world where it's not natural to be played.